how's the uh, how's See, the Achilles? Yeah, we're getting right. going. <laughs> yes. Ah, let's go. Awesome. How's, the, how's the Achilles? How's the leg? Everything good? Yeah, I feel good. I feel good. It's been a long, uh, long, you know, ten months or whatever rehab, maybe even more. But uh, yeah, I felt great at probably four months, and then about the same for the next three months, and then it was uh, the last three months been feeling uh, kind of that last. Five ten percent. Why was it important for you to come back and practice last year? Uh, mentally, I think it was just such a heartbreaking, frustrating, you know, start after so much excitement and euphoria and expectations. Um, you know, I busted my ass those first three months and felt really, really good. And then once you know we were out of it, I, you know, was designated to return. Uh, and yeah, I had fun at practice, but. But that was, you know, still not not uh, you know a down a down part of the entire year after all the excitement and expectations. But but then we kind of backed off for like a month or so and just kind of let me mentally uh, and physically kind of rest, and then kind of dove back into the the rehab. So I mean, not to get too philosophical, but oh, really ahead, to ahead. to to reach. You your... woke up, you know, you put on your uh, <laughs> yeah. your island shirt. Yeah, your I vibes, did. That's right. Know? Yes, look at that. Yeah, um, but you're in uh, a good mood. I, I so. was in a good mood. I just came Let's back from deep. Italy. This is the first show I've done after like nine days in Italy. Nice. So I knew like nothing that was going on. Like you could have hurt yourself again. I wouldn't have known because I just showed up here. I was like, I just tell me what happened. You didn't follow the Olympics. Oh, the excitement no, with no, all no, that. No, 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 I, to, no. I just had to detach for a little bit. But in order, I've always believed. In order to get to the best version of yourself, you got to go through some horrible stuff. And what happened last year to you, yeah. I think, I think, could be end up being a good thing. And things that you didn't know that you were capable of, you end up being capable of because you went through that. Is is that fair to say, or is that just some stupid like uh, fortune cookie thing? Not about fortune cookies. <laughs> I mean, there's some other people that have said similar stuff. No, but yeah. I, I believe that for sure. That. Uh, I have a hard time with the whole everything happens for a reason thought process because I think like that glosses over a lot of really crappy times and and I think it's okay to to wish things had gotten better or easier learn the lesson without going through that but I think there can be some little beautiful miracles in the midst of the chaos and frustration and heartbreak and I think there were some some really uh, special things that happened in my life uh, during the last ten months but I think I had to go to some dark places in order to to fully experience the you know the highs there's the highs the lows and the in betweens and and uh, kind of experienced a lot of that. I'm, I'm going to try and stay more in the in-betweens here for the next uh, next run. <laughs> you know, for me, I had a lot of lows here when I was uh, the quarterback of the Jets. <laughs> I have to tell you. So, you know, the, the, the trip to Egypt wasn't there. The ayahuasca wasn't there back then. I wish it was. It was. Maybe it you was. Had, you had to go find it. I don't know phone. what it was, but I felt like I was like living in a, 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 the third dimension, if you will, especially after three coaches in three years. But you do understand the history of the Jets. I know you do. Yeah. Uh-huh. And you know that they haven't been to the playoffs since 2020. It's a frustrated fan base. Ben. Yeah, 10, 20, 10. 2010, excuse me. But it's a frustrated fan base. Yeah. You know, and I know that you want to be great. I know you want to be the guy that you were in Green Bay. But I think, you know, there's a point where you you can put too much pressure on yourself. And and I'm just wondering, do you, do you think about that pressure? And do you think about trying to deliver everything that you are to the fans? Yeah, I'd love to. I think that that's a fuel, you know. I think, I mean, boom, you're a great competitor. Like, us great competitors, we'd like to put on the line. And we realize that success and failure is, is not uh, binary wins and losses. You know, it's a mindset. It's it's going out there and and willing to put your best on the line, knowing it's not going to be uh, good enough in a win loss matrix every single time. You know, it's just so rare. You you go seventeen and zero, um, but the most important thing is being willing to put it out there and not let the fear of failure cripple you. The fear of failure is a motivator because you embrace that and you you set your uh, your sights on success as just as being your best. And being your best has multifaceted. It's a preparation. It's a mindset. It's it's a willingness to lay it on the line. I think we all want to do that. Uh, as far as the pressure of coming through for the fans, that's the way it is. You know, I've been fortunate enough to play for two organizations that set a standard of excellence. Not, hey, let's just have a pretty good season. You mm-hmm. know, it's no, let's let's be the best. And I think that's the, that's what you want to play. And you don't want to play in a city where. They're just so excited to, you know, win a few games every year. You know, it's like, no, we're the no, New York They're not excited Jets, around you know? here for that. They want more. Let's go, you know, get, yeah. it, get it done and get the hell out, you know. So that, that's the type of team we want to play for. 